But actually, this is one interesting element that I observed, and this isn't just Elon, but I think if you take a look at Jeff Bezos of Blue Origin, he's in the same boat, and a number of others. Um, and I think it's a key difference that we somewhat struggle with with traditional aerospace. If you look at traditional aerospace, a large number of the managers until recently in those organizations got their organizational training in the military. A lot of them, that's, that's where they learned how you organize people, large number of people. That's where you get hierarchy, chain of command, okay? If you take a look at all these current billionaires, Richard Branson, um, you know, even Paul Allen, you know, Elon Musk, uh, Dave uh, uh, Mastin, Jeff Bezos, they all got their management training in the software industry. That's where they cut their teeth. That's where they saw how you organize people. And that's a whole startup um, you know, um, structure, which is almost at the other end of the spectrum from a military organizational model. Startup mentality is very flat. You do things ad hoc. People work very hard, but it's, it's a kind of an organic structure. It's kind of what I call the pickup game of basketball. So for any of you sportsmen out there, if you're going to play a pickup game of basketball, okay, well, you show up at a gym, and there's a couple things you have to decide on. Okay, first, you have to show up at the gym. Two, you have to decide what game you're playing. Is it basketball or football or soccer? Now, if some of you are playing soccer and some of you are playing basketball and some are playing football, it's not going to go very well. So you have to decide on what game you're playing. And then and you have no coaches, generally, and then people start playing. And if you take a look at uh, organizational theory, you find that uh, we self-organize very well in groups under 160. That this is part of our hunter-gatherer evolution. So under about 160, uh, people are very good if they decide on what game they're going to play and then start playing. Um, they will organize to find out who's a good guard, who's a good forward, who's a good center, and they'll arrange themselves in, through this organic process to, to play basketball. And so that's what um, the startup companies tend to do. They let that natural organiz in organizing process occur. Now, the challenge, and Elon so far has handled this very well at SpaceX, if you get over about 160, now you need some superstructure, okay, because people can't self-organize over that amount. And that's where the military came in with, with their way of organizing large number of people. And uh, typically, that's a stumbling point for organizations uh, getting from essentially under 160, the startup mode, to being much larger. Like I say, to, to date, Elon's handled that transition very, very well. Um, I know there were a number of people concerned. Could, could SpaceX make the transition from really that startup mode, self-organizing, you know, everyone, you know, pulling towards the same um, goal to a large organization where now you need to have some type of organizational structure and directors you need some level of requirements and, and documentation to operate. But to date, he's, he's done that as well. It's challenging, and I guess the one thing that I've seen that Elon has done, he brought in a lot of production people, um, so, and which created, I know, some tension with the R&D engineers because when they were in startup mode, the kings were the, the research and development engineers, and once they got into production, Elon brought in people, he brought in, I think, the, uh, one of the, the key project managers for Mini Cooper, and this is a guy who was making thousands of automobiles a year, and so when Elon talked to him about making, you know, a few tens of rockets, he collect tens of rockets, that's easy. Okay, I've made thousands of Mini Coopers, and I don't know if you know much about Mini Cooper, but they can be custom designed, so they can be, have a lot of different variations from, from vehicle to vehicle. So he actually brought in people who understood high production, you know, precision manufacturing. And then they have become kind of the, the kings, particularly in the shop, and if you go out to the shop at SpaceX, you'll see they have these glass cubicles in the shop area, and those are all the production engineers. So they can look out from their desks at any time and see how kind of the whole, you know, shop area is, is going. If they see a problem somewhere, they can see it and address it immediately. Whereas the R&D engineers are next door at their cubicles. So Elon, I guess, did enough thinking as to how did he want to uh, handle the, the work environment to get the results that he wanted.